Hello and welcome to Moving Iron Podcast after the bell with Chip Nellinger. Chip looks like the uh, markets had a fairly decent day today, but we also had some some reports come out. So, what happened with the markets and how things looking out there? Yeah, pretty active day. Uh, had a lot of strength early on. You know, overnight markets were higher. Uh, had some good strength early on in the uh, in the session, and um, beans kind of faded into the close. Corn and wheat held together uh, with uh, with pretty good strength. And that surprised a lot of people because we made uh, you know a lot of planning progress, field work, uh, crop big chunk of the corn over the weekend, and look to advance that here at least for the first half of this week. So uh, kind of a wild day to start the uh, uh, start the week off. Although it was the last day of a month, and I think that was um, you know kind of evident because the funds a lot of times will um, you know last couple of days of a month or the start of a new month uh, will put you know, either extend their position or get out of positions. So it was pretty apparent today. Uh, and so they were buying wheat to exit the position that at one point uh, wheat was up 14 to 16 cents, back off a little into the close, but still a pretty strong close, uh, generally up 6 to 9 cents uh, in wheat. Corn at one point was up uh, all over 4 cents, 4.5 and cents, and uh, ended up with anywhere from 2 to 3 cent gains. The bean market uh, ended up lower, not a real great close, probably 12 to 14 cents off of the session highs. Um, still a little bit of, of fear that this uh, this trade delegation that's talking um, to China this week won't make much progress, so I think that weighed on the bean market a little bit. Gotcha. So before this, we were talking about just some, uh, some crop conditioning reports that came out of Kansas and Oklahoma, and it sounds like the wheat's... Uh, Probably a little worse off than what was, uh, I guess, predicted earlier. Uh, well, they're, they're, you know, as far as state by state, we get the state by state. Uh, across the country, the wheat crop did improve by 2%, the 33% good to excellent. Most improvements came in the far north where they had some moisture. Um, Kansas and Oklahoma still struggle. We really haven't seen much of a rebound in Kansas and Oklahoma since that big rain a couple weekends ago. And so that's where the hot spot is, obviously. There's not much rain in their forecast. You know, so they're quickly kind of closing the window here on where uh, moisture is going to help them. And, um, you know, you got some other areas of the world, too. The Black Sea area is starting to get dry. Um, although they're not really in their growing season, it's awful dry in Australia. Dry enough that it may inhibit planting there. So there's some uh, little hot spots in the pop up in other uh, parts of the world as well that, uh, you know, in doubt right now, it looks like to have the funds decide, hey, we're, uh, we're going to pair back this short position. Let's get out of some of these shores, and that means, uh, you know, buying to hit the market. Gotcha. Okay. All right, Chip, well, if guys, or, let's talk about the cattle market real quick. So how did that finish up today? Uh, cattle, um, again, a choppy, choppy close there. Um, closed lower, traded higher throughout the day, had a really strong uh, cash market last week, and unfortunately for the last four or five weeks, we've kind of traded this way. The market just slops around early in the week, waits on cash trade. If cash is going to hold together and trade better this week, we'll see some further gains, but uh, not a real great uh, close in cattle. Closed, um, I don't know where, 80, 80 to a buck lower. Uh, kind of depending on the contract month in cattle. So not a great way to start the week, but I don't know that it means a whole lot either. Um, one thing we should probably talk about, too, we, we jumped over to the cattle here, but we also had the uh, planning progress out, and that was a, maybe just a touch supportive in um, corn and beans. So corn came out at 17% complete nationwide. The market... Um, uh, the average estimate was about 18%. There were some estimates as high as 25%. At Illinois is north of 30%, so that's where the big progress was made. But the scary thing is Minnesota and the Dakotas uh, are in a goose egg. So they're too cold still. They have not started effectively. I have uh, zero corn in the ground. The bean planting progress was uh, 5%. The market thought that would be somewhere in the 7 to 9% range. So even on the bean side... Even though there's great progress made in the Eastern Corn Belt, we're still a little bit behind the pace um, on bean planting as well. Now there's, you know, three or four more days of open weather here and then some rain coming mid to late week. So, you know, we'll see. It's not wildly supportive.
reported. But uh, again, that was a touch below what the market thought. So that might maybe give us a little bit of a bounce in the overnight here. Gotcha. Okay. All right, Chip. Well, if guys want to get a hold of you, continue the conversation, how would they do that? Yeah, best way just call my office, 309 550 I'd love to chat with you about uh, what your uh, marketing plan is and how we might be able to improve it. Great. Well, you can find Moving Iron Podcast on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher Radio, TuneIn Radio, and SoundCloud. And uh, look for Chip uh, on our YouTube channel. And you can also find Glenn Birnbeck's tax tip of the week there as well. So, Chip, till tomorrow, uh, we'll touch base with you then. All right, have a good evening. All right, thanks, bud. Take care.